Supply and demand is at the heart of everything that you learn in economics, so it's pretty important that you understand it. I think it's really important though for you to not just simply memorize why a supply curve looks the way it does or a demand curve looks the way it does, but rather to have a logical and deep understanding of it. So let's start with the supply curve. The first thing is let's draw the axes. The axes on the y-axis we've got price and on the x-axis we've got quantity. From now on, every single time you hear the word supply, I want you to imagine yourself as a farmer. Decide whatever it is that you want to grow on your farm. On my farm, we're going to grow potatoes. Now, let's say that the price of potatoes have gone up. Forget why. There's no explanation as to why they've gone up. Would you want to sell more or less potatoes? You'd obviously want to sell more because you'd make more money. Therefore, as the price of potatoes go up, you would be willing to sell more and more potatoes. In other words, the supply curve must be upward sloping because the higher the price, the more incentive I have as a farmer or a producer to sell that particular good. Hence why it is always upward sloping. Now, before we talk about the shifts to the supply curve, let's deal with the demand curve. The demand curve is really straightforward because think of yourself as a consumer and you are pretty much on a daily basis. If the price of the good goes up, can you afford to buy a lot or a little? You can't afford to buy as much. But as the price of the good goes down, you can now buy more and more of that good. Therefore, the demand curve will be downward sloping because as the price falls, you demand more of it. Clear as that. So what I'd like us to deal with is factors that shift the supply curve. Now, one of the most important things that you need to remember is from the perspective of a producer, one of the major factors that will affect their supply is their costs. So anything that would alter their costs is going to shift supply. So let's go through a hypothetical example. Let's say that your workers all go on strike, and as a result, you end up having to pay them a higher wage. What would that do to your supply? Well, your costs are higher. Therefore, you cannot afford to hire as many workers. So which way would supply shift? Supply would shift inwards to the left, because now you can't supply as many units as before. Another factor that could shift the supply curve is improvements in technology. Because if technology improves, the quantity of units you're capable of producing is now higher. So in that instance, the supply curve would shift outwards. Another thing that would shift the supply could be something along the lines of if your rent goes up or goes down. And again, the same thing is true. If it goes up, you supply less. If it goes down, you supply more. The final one is specialization, which you should already know. A specialization enables firms to produce at a higher volume because everyone is now so good at what they do. Therefore, the supply curve would shift outwards. So that's the supply curve. Let's deal with it from the perspective of demand. What are the factors that shift the demand curve? So think about things that would affect whether consumers would be able to buy more or less of a good. Now, the most common misconception and the most common incorrect answer is students go, Dem the demand shifts if the price changes. That is not true. Neither supply or demand shift due to prices. It's the other way around. For the price to change, either supply must have shifted or demand must have shifted. So let's deal with demand. What kind of things would shift the demand curve? Number one, the clue is me. Look at what I'm wearing. I know you're thinking it, but you can say it out loud. No one's hearing you. I'm not very fashionable. It's okay. If something goes into fashion, the demand for that good would go out. If something goes out of fashion, then the demand would shift in. Simple as that. Number two, another factor that might shift demand, well, what do I need in order to buy goods and services? I need money. So therefore, if my income goes up, my demand shifts to the right, outwards. If my income goes down, let's say I lose my job, then my demand curve would shift inwards. So anything along those lines would easily be something that you could identify as a factor that shifts demand. There's one more that I want to make sure you understand because it comes up quite often in the data response. And it's something called speculation. So let's say that I said to you that the price of water is going to go up tomorrow. What would you do today? You'd probably buy a lot of water anticipating that. But if everyone thinks that and everyone does it, then it actually causes the demand to shift out, causing the price to go up. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If enough people believe that something will happen, it will happen. A great example of this to remember it by is a couple of years ago, petrol tankers were threatening to go on strike. They hadn't even gone on strike. These are the people that deliver the petrol to petrol stations. 
And on the news, it was saying things like, oh, there's going to be chaos. People are going to be queuing for hours on end to get petrol. What do you think people did? They were like, oh, I need to get petrol. So everyone went to the petrol station and what were they greeted with? A massive long queue. And in the end, they didn't even go on strike. But that is an example of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If enough people believe that something's going to happen, it will happen. So always look out for things like speculative buying or speculation because that means the demand curve will be shifting out.